Damn, down 4-8. Haikyuu Season 3, Episode 8, An Annoying Guy. Gee, I wonder who that is. No, it didn't. It was just one point. Mind games from Sugara. <laughs> I love it. For a lesser team, it would decide the game, but this is not that team. Get back in there, Hinata. We need you. This guy's still serving. I was not expecting it to end in a mistake, but I guess since he's trying to go full power. Yes, it was merciful. God is merciful. That's what I'm saying. That was a crazy run. Yeah, by himself. That's what I'm saying as well. And Kagama might be rested. Speaking of pressure... He's doing great. Nope, it's alright. Hinata's got it. With his face. Classic. Trademark. <laughs> From his face to... Sugawara. I was gonna go back to him, but yeah, it's not a better choice. Fake me out. He's built up a resistance, a tolerance that balls in the face. What's different will make him great, just like Ushiwaka. He has a lot more than talent and shortness. It's hard. I mean, that's really what it is. An outlook. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe it's something the fact that they're similar in a key way, but different enough that it doesn't add up for Ushiwaka. They both have a very similar heart, drive, desire to attack, but Ushiwaka has such a refined style and strategy. So elegant, so simple. Hinata is just total wild card. If you have a certain paradigm for something and you're so convinced that it's the right way, that you've built everything you are around it, when someone comes along with a totally different paradigm and is able to rival you in terms of success, it's a threat. But in the threat is, a, is an admission of respect because you're not threatened by things that have no power. I think also it's easy to get riled up when we see people having things we want or attaining things we were striving for and to us it feels like they haven't earned it. But likely critical in that is the realization of a mistake in one's thinking about what it means to earn something and what it means to be able to get something and what truly matters. So this is likely going to be a learning experience for Ushiwaka once he gets over the, the distaste for Hinata's playstyle. And I maintain that I have no doubt that he will respect Hinata. <laughs> Close the gap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for this. He's probably itching to get back in too. I think I was saying something like that last episode. You can't stop till the play's over. <laughs> His elbow. Not a guy up there. Again, not giving up on it. He said he was going to do it again, and he's doing it again. But you got to catch him off guard. Maybe Nishinoya can dump it. <laughs> he's a little too far out for that. That could have been a mind game. Mind game, you got faked out. Second guessing yourself. What is this soy? It's all in at this point. Hardyama-kun. So Gwar did great. <laughs> He's actually staring at terrified. I know Kagam was just like brooding, waiting for this chance to come back in. Can we get a quick? We can. That's what we do. We're back. Come in full circle. This guy just totally converted. Oh, they lost some momentum. Oh no, no, don't skip their points. I want to see every point. Out, 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 out. Damn. Oh. Stop. Three points from a loss. Stop it. Oh, now you get your energy back, front runners. Remember when we had no one? No one supported. Team giving them something to believe in. With his toupee. Huh? 
Now we will regale, regale them with this warm island song. We'll cool their hearts with this warm island song. We'll warm their hearts with this cool island song. Nobody cares about your castle. Is it just me or do I find that, or is this song like demotivating? It's too like solemn. Look at this. Did he actually just get that? <laughs> he actually blocked. Oh my god! I, I was I thought it might happen, but I can't can't believe it actually did. He not just blocked Ushiwaka. Sort of, sort of block. Yeah, this <laughs> is un, unclear. Where does the block end and a return begin? You must respect. You can be annoyed, but you must respect. You cannot ignore. I don't think that was lucky. Bold of you to say this, to Ushiwaka. Oh no, he's not out again. Yeah! Everyone gets a turn to shine. Don't let all that growth go to waste. Synchronized attack! <laughs> Finally, they're announcing it again. Oh, two points away. Wait, what? Oh, nice! Yeah, that's super lucky. Yeah, this has been a war that just keeps escalating. Getting better. That was always the plan, though. It was always just to give him resistance. Too high. Nice. Nice save. <laughs> For a character with no development, it's nice to see him actually come in and do well. I'm good trying to roll. He touched it last minute. <laughs> Could you just looked out twice? I love it. But not just luck. Oh, Ushiwaka being kind to the person gunning for a spot and insulting him. He's so mature. You got a long way to go. It's interesting to compare Ushiwaka and Daichi because they're both rocks of their team but with very different styles. I would say the common element between them though that makes them both effective is that there's no malice in any of it. They both have very mature and therefore strong positions. You can count on them. It all comes from love though it might be love of different things. Daichi seems to lead from a place of actual regard for his teammates. Ushiwaka for love of the game perhaps. And that fits in with the overall themes of the teams, their their philosophies that have been built this season. Where Carson is a little bit more integrated and unified as opposed to a collection of great individuals. Wow, they're actually up. So close. Watch these final two or three points be the rest of the season. Deliberately to Ushiwaka. Oh, he let it. He figured it out. They're activated. Yeah, Ushiwaka's words really helping him there. Kind of humbled him. Oh, it's match point. And they're serving. Match point but we've been here before many, many, many times. And they haven't broken. This won't break them either. Not from this kid. Not from this kid. Nice Synchronize attack. <laughs> Taichi. So clutch. Could it have gone any other way? <laughs> Coach flashback. <laughs> Coach's viable days? Oh, is that why he wanted to assemble a team of aces? Just killers? I love how he has the same old man voice. <laughs> I believe in their concentration and their morale. Yeah. The sentimental music too. Been here before. Been here before many, many times. After seeing Shiro Torizawa's coach's reflections, I would imagine Hinata would be kind of an existential threat to him as someone who's short, but is not letting that hinder him in any way. Coach's strategy for assembling this team feels like revenge against the world, and it feels like kind of a concession of defeat. I mean, it could be worse. It could be just quitting. Like, I would rather the philosophy of, I'll show you, I hate losing so much that I'm gonna just crush, than I would just giving up. But it's an admission of defeat in the sense that I can't win on my own terms, and I have to adopt some other values. It's prioritizing winning an outcome over 
lessons and growth. Looking at it more generally, if someone gets defeated in a certain realm of life and their answer is, I'll show them, I'm going to just crush them across this domain of life. In a way that's hard to put into words, they're beholden to their, their misery. And let's say that they do accomplish it and they crush and they win like coach has been able to do so many times. Are they happy or are they satisfied in a real meaningful level? Have they proven to the world that they're they're worth it? Have they addressed the underlying issue that caused the insecurity? My guess would be probably not. Not to say victory isn't important or great, but one of the things that makes the, the show so meaningful for Carsuno is not only the outcome of the game games, but their development as people. That's the, where the riches are. Has coach developed or is he still bitter? They're exhausted. Yeah, hey, there's some coaching. They yeah, quieted the whole stadium. <laughs> it's a great moment for Ukai. Usually that kind of speech is uh, reserved for Takeda Sensei. Suki back? Oh, Suki's back. What great timing. Just lifting everyone's spirits. Coming in with super swag, too. Oh, damn it. <laughs> why? That, why now? So I guess the game's gonna be decided next episode. And then maybe one for epilogue. We got our full squad now. And we're only done by one. It's it, We could get a deuce. It just takes one point. One point to catch up, two points to turn it around, three points to win. Very doable in the realm of volleyball. It was nice to see Ukai put the spiritual momentum on his shoulders like that. Did they deliberately save that for the end? He's always helpful, he's always wise, he's always very insightful, but I think that's been his most passionate outburst for the team. <laughs> I like how they flashed Daichi's face too, because real immediately recognizes real. That was right up Daichi's lane, the kind of energy he feeds on. I really want to binge these last two episodes. The coach reflection was so interesting to me and is very short, but I think critical for the themes of the show and the episode. It's intuitively unsatisfying to me his outlook and his approach. Again, like, it's not the worst, because he's still successful, and he's made something of himself. And it's led to real great results, and victory, and good things for his team. So, I would say it's positive, overall. But just compared to Karasuno, compared to the difference in outlook, it's incomplete. Winning is great, but it depends on what you're winning. You know, winning, winning a game, winning a match, winning a championship isn't everything. Now, you run a risk of going down that road and thinking that, if that's used as an excuse to not do the work and not do the growth. To sour grapes it, to be like, well, it doesn't matter anyway, as a sort of pacifier for your own internal knowledge that you should be doing more or could be doing more or could be living to your potential, then that's not really a great way to look at it. Then it's an obstacle to growth. But if we're aiming for the top, if we're aiming for just true greatness, and if, if shows are an exploration of what that means, the benefit to the individuals on this team, and I guess this extends to the coaches as well, is going to come from that the striving for victory, but it's not the victory itself. It's the things that they develop in themselves as human beings. It's the, the realizations they come to, the paradigms they develop for their own lives and their outlooks, maximizing their potential, not letting fear get in their way, taking the shots they know they can take, being humble, being unselfish, being courageous, gaining real self-value, real self-confidence. That's the, the ultimate victory. And you hope or you imagine that if you do all, all those things perfectly, victory will follow eventually, one way or the other, whether it's this championship or another championship or other areas of their lives completely. That's what makes the philosophical battle between these two teams so important, I think. To give an example outside of volleyball, let's say someone suffers with feelings of inadequacy or irrelevance, and so they look around them at the world, and they, they make other people the locus of power and importance and value, and they think, how can I play this game to, to best win? Maybe they come up with something like money, fame, etc., and those are great pursuits. I have nothing against those pursuits at all, and I think it's better to pursue something than to just shrink away from the challenge completely. But let's take that to its logical conclusion, and let's say people just go for sheer victory. Maybe they cut corners, or they sacrifice certain principles they develop values that are entirely around that system and victory in that system where there's limited questioning of the game itself There's little questioning of what principles actually are important What values are actually important who they really are who they really want to be and instead just strive for that victory and then attain it you know, They attain fame or they attain riches I think we all have an intuitive understanding that that's not the apex That's not the best that one can do and I, I mean, I think it's borne out I think we can see that pretty clearly that obviously those things in a vacuum fame fortune etc Are not quick fixes for the human condition. They're not satisfying satisfying for the human soul beyond just the immediate things that they provide. Sure, there are benefits, sure, it'll feel great, but it's not that deeper kind of greatness that people are really looking for. And the, the happiness kind of wears thin quickly. I mean, look at the coach, right? At, at his age, let's say he's deeply insecure about who he is, what he's been able to accomplish. The victory for him, again, not to take anything away from it will be great. He'll be respected in the volleyball community. But at the end of the day, he goes home and has to look in the mirror and sees himself. He is who he is. His principles are what they are, regardless of the victory. And like grand scheme of things, he's a high school volleyball coach. You know, there are so much greater riches than victory as that.